Hey everybody, this is David and I am going to be doing my review for TMNT. And uh, for those of you that don't know, that stands for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But if you are on the internet, you probably already know that. <laughs> so let's begin. I'm going to start with the looks and the voices of the turtles. I, I actually really like the animation in this movie. And... Um, it, it's not Pixar or or DreamWorks level animation, but it is pretty good animation for what it is. The looks of the turtles are actually pretty decent. They look like the turtles, they act like the turtles, and the great thing about the style of the animation that helps them is that um, they can move more faster, where in the live action movies, the turtles act more like humans, regular, you know, they fight like how a human f would fight. But, I mean, let's take this into an animation level. I think it, the turtles actually work pretty well in their, this sort of style. I, I think it's actually, um, it works a lot better for what they are. The voices of the turtles, again, are really good. I haven't enjoyed the turtles' voices this much since Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. I thought that was the movie with the best voice cast. This one, to me, rivals that that cast. I think everybody is very suitable in their roles. Um, which brings me to now Sarah Michelle Gellar and Chris Evans as the voice of... April and Casey. For those of you that don't know, Sarah Michelle Gellar uh, played Buffy the Vampire Slayer in that, you know, that Joss Whedon show that uh, everybody, everyone should know who Joss Whedon is. And Chris Evans is recently Captain America. To me, I actually thought this to myself a long time ago, and I still think it today. I wouldn't have mind if either of them had played the roles in live action. I think both of them would suit the roles pretty well, especially for this movie. If this movie was live action, I wouldn't have mind seeing them in that, those roles because uh, they're 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 good quality actors. I think both of them are really good, and uh, even in the voices, you can hear it that you know. I I think it would have been interesting to see a live action version of this because I think they would have played it just as good, maybe even better. The story of this film is pretty decent. Um, I wouldn't say it's like an amazing story that's going to break, you know, all superhero movies or whatever. But um, the heart of the story, I'm going to say, was the story of the brothers in general, uh, especially about Leo and Rav, because Leo comes back from this. Basically, when the movie starts, Leo has gone off on this journey the spiritual journey that Splinter sent him off on. And when he returns, the brothers are all broken. They're all lost because when Leo had left, they all had gone out and done their own things. And when it all comes down to it, it came down to this battle between Raphael and Donatello because Raphael is still the hothead, even after all these years. And... Um, it came to this huge fight between the two of them, and it was actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie, where Leo and Raph actually come to blows. And um, I thought the the scene was re really well done and very well animated. The voice work from the two actors, you know, I, I think everyone in the movie did a really good job with that scene. With the whole movie in general, it was, it was a lot of fun. And... Uh, yeah, like I said, the story of the two of all the brothers in general, that's the heart of this movie and that's the heart of the story. The villain story not so much, but I'll get to that later. I also really like the return of the Foot Clan, uh this time led by Karai. For those of you that don't know, Karai is the daughter of Shredder, which I'm sure would have been revealed if the movie got a sequel, but it didn't. But um yeah, she is the daughter of Shredder. For those of you that watched the 2003 cartoon, it was revealed. And I think in the comics, it's like that too. Uh, some of the c things I didn't like about the movie, Splinter. Even though I enjoyed most of the cast in this movie, who did the voices, uh, Splinter's look I didn't mind, but it was more his voice. And I know he was voiced by, um, I think he was a Japanese actor named Marco. 
And, you know, I know he's a really high respected actor and he passed away. But I'm not being disrespectful. But in my opinion, I didn't think he was the best voice. I'll admit this, though. I thought he was way better than the voice from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Um, then again, that wasn't really much competition. So, But he he was okay. I, I wouldn't say he was awful, but he was okay. He was an okay voice. I still prefer Kevin Clash over anybody else. The villains are also pretty weak in this movie. I, I thought there wasn't really much substance to them. They were just like creatures that came and had this agenda to destroy the world. Um, I, even the character Patrick Stewart played, he wasn't really a villain, but he he was pretty weak. Um, yeah, that's all I really got to say about the villains. Final thoughts. I'm giving this movie a 7 out of 10. I thought it was a fun film. Um, I wouldn't have mind seeing a sequel to it. I thought, you know, it left some doors open. And it would have been great to see how a sequel would have played out. Because uh, they had set up this thing where Karai mentions that an old enemy would return one day. And um, obviously referring to the Shredder, for those of you that are clueless and don't know. And uh, it, it would have been fun to see how they would have brought Shredder back in a sequel in animation style. And, you know, I didn't mind the animation. Like I said, like I said, it's not high quality animation. But for what it is, it was it was good to look at, I guess. It was, it was kind of like PS3 graphics, I guess. Um, if you want me to be specific about how the animation looked, uh, which isn't a good thing, but I mean, it was, it was decent and, um, yeah, I'm kind of sad that they didn't make a sequel because, um, they could even make a direct to, a direct to a video if they really wanted. And, um, instead we're getting a sequel, uh, no, a reboot from Michael Bay, which, um, I'm not hearing very good things about, but we'll see. Uh, my review for that will be coming very soon and uh, yeah I'll give my thoughts on that and uh, for whatever reason you know check out this movie um, I think a lot of you will have fun with it it's not up to par with like the first two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle films but it's much better than the third one and I, I think if you go in with low expectations and knowing that okay this is for kids I think you'll still have a good time. Kids will definitely love this film, I think. Uh, I think, I mean, I was a kid when I loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I'm sure if I was a kid, I would love this even more. Um, but as an adult, I'm going to say that this was okay. This was, if, especially if you were a Ninja Turtles fan for a long time, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy this. So, guys, that's it. That's the fourth Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film that was released in 2007. And uh, now I just have one more Ninja Turtles film to review. Wish me luck.